Hi, and welcome to my video series of Biotechnics Explained in 5 Minutes, where I explain a concept of biology in less than 5 minutes or so. In today's installment, we'll talk about hydrophobic interaction chromatography, which is a chromatographic technique in which hydrophobic interaction is used as a principle for separation. Now, this chromatographic technique is way better than other kind of chromatographic technique because the way the proteins are eluted or purified is less denaturating and the proteins could be recovered in a native state or in a less denaturated state. Before we start the video, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notification and do share my channel in social media such that I can reach bigger audience. If you want to support me, please go to my Patreon page and my courses are also available in Unacademy. So use 10% uh, AP10 for a 10% discount. Back to the workflow of hydrophobic interaction chromatography. Just like any other column chromatographic method, the workflow is very same. It starts with equilibration, then binding, wash, and followed by the elution step. But the difference lies in terms of the column material. So the hydrophobic interaction chromatography column is packed with a hydrophobic bead, a general bead whose surface is coated with the hydrophobic material. So we'll talk about the column material later, but these hydrophobic coating can actually interact with the hydrophobic surface of the protein. And this is the basis of binding. Like this is how the protein binds to the column. Now let us imagine a hypothetical situation where there are two proteins. One protein has higher hydrophobic surface, generally the protein A, and the protein B has lower degree of hydrophobic surface. We can understand that there would be greater extent of hydrophobic interaction between protein A and the column compared to protein B. So in layman's term, protein A would bind strongly to the column compared to protein B. Now whenever hydrophobic interaction chromatography is practiced, the column is loaded with a high salt buffer. And the high salt buffer is key to understand the principle of hydrophobic interaction chromatography. In a moment, we would try to understand that. So we have already understood that hydrophilic regions and hydrophobic regions could be present on the surface of protein. There could be patch of both. Now under solvated condition, when the protein is dissolved in a buffer, there would be a lot of buffer molecules or lot of solvent molecules, generally water, coating the entire surface of the protein. This would mask all the hydrophobic patches on the protein, right? And in this situation, there would be no interaction between the hydrophobic patch and the hydrophobic surface of the column because everything is masked by the solvent molecules. Some agent is required to get rid of these kind of coating effect and those reagents are nothing but cosmotropic salts such as ammonium sulfate. In this situation, the solvent molecules would make themsel themselves more busy to dissolve the salt ions or they would interact more with the salt ions uh, compared to the protein. As a result, the protein surface would be now free and exposed. When the protein hydrophobic surface is exposed, it is free to interact with the hydrophobic material, the hydrophobic interaction column. And in this way, it can bind to the column. Now we have to understand the extent of binding and the salt concentration. That is why two hypothetic situations are presented here. In situation B, a protein, let's say protein B, interacts with the hydrophobic column, which has a lot of hydrophobic surface. First of all, this interaction is very strong, right? Compared to another interaction where protein A binds to the column and protein A has very tiny bit of hydrophobic surface. So protein B is binding way stronger than protein A as depicted in this situation. Now you can see 
a very little amount of salt is required to get rid of protein B and the B interaction. In the background, you can see a very less amount of salt molecules are depicted. This is because these salt molecules actually increase the entropy and allow this interaction to happen, make this interaction thermodynamically favorable. When the salt ions would decrease, the water molecule would resolvate this protein and prevent the interaction, right? But as the interaction is stronger between this protein and the bead, very low amount of salt is required. In other words, high level of solvent is required to elute or to get rid of the interaction between protein uh, B and the bead. Whereas even high level of salt concentration can get rid of protein A from the bead, right? So always remember, higher the salt concentration, greater is the chance of hydrophobic interaction, right? Because higher the salt concentration, there would be way more exposed surface. Let us imagine the elution profile. The elution is done in a stepwise decreasing salt gradient. That means you start with a higher salt concentration and end up with a low salt concentration. At very high salt concentration, the proteins which have very low level of hydrophobic surface exposed would be eluted because obviously the interaction is weak. Whereas at very low salt concentration, proteins which have quite a lot of exposed surface would be exposed. So we can, would be eluted. Now we can understand the sequence of elution and the principles behind that. In general, higher the hydrophobicity, stronger the interaction. And higher the hydrophobicity, lower the salt it takes to elute. Because the salt would promote or induce binding by exposing the surface. So overall, what we learned from this video is the more hydrophobic the molecule, less salt is required to promote the binding because the hydrophobic surface has a strong affinity towards, a, towards these hydrophobic patches on the protein. Whereas more salt is required for a protein which has very low extent of hydrophobic surface. Now, this is depiction of the hydrophobic material used in HIC chromatography. Both has tertiary butyl or methyl groups which are highly hydrophobic in nature. Other than these factors, hydrophobic interaction chromatography based on, is based on pH changes, temperature changes, and types of salt that is used for elution. Generally, higher temperature is favored for HIC, whereas cosmotropic salts are good for hydrophobic interaction chromatography. In contrast, the chaotropic salt is not good for hydrophobic interaction chromatography technique. So in this video, we reviewed the concept behind hydrophobic interaction chromatography in detail. By the way, guys, these hydrophobic interaction chromatography columns could be used in HPLC settings for better and faster purification of our desired protein. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you, guys.